A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. This time it's another project video. So yeah, let's just see how we turn this into this. This cute little pedestrian uh, light sign. Basically, this is just a night light. Um, I, though I actually have added a, a couple of features to the PCB to allow it to be extended uh, in other ways. Okay, so just to show you, uh, <laughs> there are a couple design issues, and one of them is readily obvious. Uh, I actually set, I think, 0.5 millimeter uh, gap all around the outside, and that is apparently a bit too loose, so I'm, this is going to have to be glued in. Uh, but we can remove the top layer, and this is basically just this uh, grid pattern. And I reference pretty much this entire design off of pictures online of actual pedestrian light signs. Uh, and this is just sort of a means to keep the light uh, pretty directional so that you can really see it head on clearly. And if you go off axis, it just sort of uh, gets blocked out uh, and this is printed as one piece this actually takes quite a long while to print because of like all the intricate uh, pattern there and it took <laughs> quite a bit for me to actually design this I basically just uh, drew a line in the center and then I, I kept doing offsets and I did that for both uh, both uh, diagonal lines as well as the horizontal line and then I had to go through and delete all the intersections and then select uh, basically just the uh, the solid parts and then do an extrusion upwards and that actually was kind of annoying to do and so but I mean the effect looks great next we actually have this uh, shadow mask portion here and I actually took a, a picture head-on of a pedestrian light and I imported it into Inkscape and then I used that to generate the DXF file and then I imported that into SolidWorks. And so that allowed me then to trace, get like the trace out of the pattern and then extrude everything outside of that. And so I ended up with this piece right in here, uh, which I printed and I set it up so that it stopped about halfway through right before it did the layer change. And then I was able to swap out the filament. So here you can see this is the bottom side. I printed this out in white and then I switched to black filament. And if you actually were to, to invert this and flip it over, uh, you can still see the outline. But I mean, clearly it's, it's quite a bit blurrier. So, uh, but if that were the case in the off state, you wouldn't really see the characters at all. I think aesthetically that would look better in the off state. Uh, but it's not as clear as when you look at it like this. So anyway, yeah, uh, this can easily be switched out for any other symbols, uh, whatever you wanted. The next piece in the stack is this uh, light box. And you can see this is kind of where my first boo-boo uh, happened. I designed all the plastics first, and then I designed the PCB around that and I forgot to take into account uh, the components that actually stick up. So you can see it almost cleared. You actually have to bend this piece just slightly to get it to push down. Uh, but once you do, it's fine. Uh, there is a tiny little bit of leakage because of uh, some of the solderable components. Uh, it wouldn't be that hard to take a file and notch out so that this piece fit perfectly snug, uh, flat against the board. But it's good enough and it works fine. And the reason why I have it diagonal like that instead of perfectly straight is because if you were to look at the piece, um, like the, the light up portions there, uh, they're not quite symmetrical exactly. So I had to kind of cut it at an angle there so that when one side is lit up, the other one wouldn't be and vice versa. Then we have the PCB itself, and I'll turn this off for a sec. And uh, this was clearly obviously made by JLC PCB. And it's basically just press fit. And this, I got the tolerances really tight. So 
the board fits exactly. There are, I was originally going to have it screw in, but then I decided make it a bit easier on myself and just 3D print uh, posts, like little stubs in the plastic that are just a bit undersized and the, the hole is just a bit oversized so that the entire PCB just fits snugly. I probably won't be able to get this out actually now that I think about it, the way it's designed. If I wanted to, I probably should have put like a little finger hole or something or put like a little gap so you can get a tool in there to pry it away. Uh, but basically, uh, this PCB holds the main controller. There's nothing on the back side. There is a bodge wire because I forgot to connect the USB ground to ground. Which I know it's a beginner mistake, but I had to put one bodge wire. I'll fix the files on that so it won't be an issue. And I wanted to make this board as flexible as possible. There is a little tiny bit of a gap behind this board here. So you could fit a little bit of circuitry or maybe a thin battery if you really wanted to make it uh, battery powered uh, fully internally. But I opted for uh, sort of three options. One is an ATtiny85, and that's what I currently have installed here. And this is just running a simple flash routine where It'll light up red, then white, and then it'll flash red, and then go red solid, and then go to white next, and it repeats the cycle. And this is ex the exact behavior of a real pedestrian sign. And the timings, I googled, I found some references that said they're about like 10 to 15 seconds each, so I, I think that I set it to about 10 seconds. And it looks, looks aesthetically pleasing, it looks kind of like the real thing would, so I think that's good enough. So that's the AT uh, Tiny, or uh, if you don't want to use that, you just wouldn't solder that uh, that socket. I have it socketed right now, and you would desolder these two jumpers, or just never solder them to begin with. And you could put an AT uh, Mega 328P here, and this will give you a lot more memory and more I/O. Even though you're really only using two I/O, but uh, if you wanted to do soft power management, uh, you would just desolder this jumper and your battery or your uh, uh, DC power input could be USB or you could have like a battery behind this board and you could solder a button to these two wires there and then you can have it uh, controllable via you know a button on top or something like that. Anyway, that, that could make it so that you can um, have a little bit more complex animations or whatever you want. And then last, I added a header down here and that's if you wanted to add something like a um, an ESP01 or like a D1 Mini, like a Wi-Fi controller, you can actually solder uh, just wires to that and have that board underneath this. And that way you can actually add Wi-Fi to this. So the idea being you can actually have this connected to some kind of um, status online. So for example, you could have this as a uh, like a recording indicator when you're shooting a YouTube video. If you're doing a live stream, you could have the stop pan to notify other people that a recording is in progress. And then the walk symbol could be, you know, you're done recording. So these are just ideas. Um, obviously, I just implemented the AT Tiny, so this is just standalone. There's no wireless connection. It's very simple. It just is a nightlight that happens to look like a pedestrian sign. Anyway. I do have a bit of a cutout, and what I found is it works with certain USB cables, like these really thin ones. If you have a bulky jacket, it probably will catch. Uh, you can easily file this down or take a Dremel and increase the whole size. Or likewise, you can take the design files I'll be providing and just cut out a little bit more area if you have trouble. Uh, if I have to do this next time, I would actually uh, make a protrusion on the PCB to bring this port closer to the outside. But you can see as it is right now, uh, it just fits, like exactly perfect. <laughs> and the cut actually does go through the top here of the case. So there is a little bit of a hole, unfortunately, in the geometry when I did, uh, when I did this chamfer cut. But it doesn't really bother me. Um, when it's covered up, you basically see black anyway. And yeah, uh, I was originally going to use uh, individual LEDs. And then I remember seeing these uh, chip on board LED strips. These are made for like making your own desk lights and stuff like that. And they have two versions available, 12 volts and three volts. I got the three volt version so that can run off of um, USB, which is five volts clearly. 
and I actually have a solder mask uh, cut out on the PCB so there's bare metal underneath so it kind of acts as a heat sink. Now I found with the current resistance values, I think I'm running these at about 100 milliamps each. Uh, it actually doesn't really get that hot and so I didn't put any thermal paste, it's just directly touching the uh, exposed um, metal pad, uh, which is the ground plane. So this does not get warm like at all with the current values. And uh, I have two different resistors. The red is actually, the forward voltage is a little less than the white. And so what I ended up doing was, um, this is 22 ohms for the white LED, and this is, I believe, 10 ohms for the red. And they're about equivalent in terms of brightness. There we go. So yeah, if I turn this on, you can see it does give a pretty even glow. And when you couple that with the diffuser, it actually is pretty good. I didn't exactly center these. You'll notice I didn't center the LED strips exactly. Uh, with the symbol but using the white film and actually diffuses it really well so yeah this is a heck of a lot easier than using discrete leds uh, because you only actually you don't even have to solder all four points you only really have to solder two points either at the top or the bottom i just did all four so that i can pull it flat against the board and so they don't flap around but yeah let's just reassemble this and yeah, like I said, you can print out your own symbols and stuff like that. Um, you would just use the same outline. You would just change the drawing on top before you do the extrusion. And what I am going to have to do is um, probably put a dab of glue in each corner and just uh, squish it down so that it doesn't move. Um, what I would advise doing is probably when you go to print, I would probably leave this sheet the same size, but when you go to print this, increase the size by like one or two percent so that it it uh, snap fits into here uh, but that should be easy enough if you take tweezers or like a flat blade to peel it off if you wanted to ever get back inside but uh in my case because i printed a little too undersized i'm gonna have to put a tiny little dab of glue there uh probably just enough to hold it but if i ever do want to pop it back out i can and another uh, little secret, last thing, is I put my logo inset into there, and that's really nice. Now, I use this yellow filament, obviously, because the original traffic light uh, has a black and yellow kind of motif. And when I uh, light up the LEDs, what I notice is uh, because of the infill percentage I use, I think 20%, you can actually see through the edges um, as well as around the jack where there's a hole. So in the dark, this is kind of noticeable. And on the white here, you could see as well. So I would probably go with increasing the infill or maybe spray painting the inside of this black uh, if you really wanted to light proof it and only have light coming out the front. And like I said, because of that gap that I made at the top, you can actually see a little bit of uh, light spillage. But yeah, like I said, if you increase the, um, the size of just this front layer a couple percent, uh, you should be able to get a, a tight fit where it'll prevent any light leakage as well. So yeah, this is just sort of a cute thing. Um, it looks really nice, like a night lamp, having this like next to your bed. Uh, it's very interesting. I'm actually thinking also what would be cool is to put a little sound chip in here, like the cheap greeting card uh, chips that they sell, and just record like random traffic noises, like uh, cars and honking and that kind of stuff. And I think that would make this like a really cute little um, night light sort of thing. Just accent lighting, I guess you could say. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This one took me a little while to complete, mostly because um, waiting for these LED strips from China uh, took quite a little while. Um, I ordered them like a month ago and they finally arrived, so I was able to complete this. I had pretty much the entire design ready to go. I even had the PCB uh, already in hand. And I just had to wait for those LED strips. So if you're going to do this project, order those parts early. Uh, those are going to take quite a while to arrive. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this project. And I'll put all the design files up. Uh, you're free to modify them. Um, if you do and like repost it, just you know, give me a shout out uh, to my YouTube channel and username SGM4306. Uh, but yeah, other than that, feel free to, uh, to modify this to make whatever you, you guys need to. Uh, another thing I thought... Was cool is I added a bit of a chamfer and then on this um, this top layer I added kind of these like vertical studs 
And if you look at close-ups of pictures of traffic lights, they have these kind of accents. Now, they also usually have like screw posts that come out of the top and sides at intervals. And I was going to do that, but I kind of wanted to make this without any screw holes like noticeable from the outside and to make it kind of sleeker looking. So this looks, you know, at home if you sit this on a desk. Um, so yeah, anyway, another cool thing is it just runs off of USB. So you can have a power bank going and uh, this is like 2000 milliamp hours. This is going to run quite a while on that. So yeah. If you guys really did want though and to put a bigger battery you would probably have to increase the thickness of this rear shell uh, to fit it because there's not too much space there's a couple millimeters behind the pcb right now so you probably would only be able to fit i don't know, maybe a thousand milliamp hour like a thin lipo cell like a pouch cell yeah so quick addendum i just um i wrapped the outer rim of just this front piece with some black electrical tape which then I cut into uh, slivers just so that it was just on the outer rim. And this press fits in and no more wiggling, but I can get my fingernails in there and pull it out. You can just see there, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a little bit uh, wavy in the back there, but it's enough to give it just enough friction so it doesn't come out. I wrapped like maybe about two or three layers on each side if you don't want to mess with modifying the uh, 3d print files or increasing the scaling uh, this will work just fine and it's easily you know removable still if you get your fingernails or a small screwdriver in there to pry it out yeah not going to pop out on its own now great so yeah anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one bye